Are women equal to men? Absolutely. We are all human beings and there's no difference. And so what the Crown Prince is telling us is this is your nation, you are my people. What do you need? How can I help you? Five years in terms of opening up Saudi Arabia and I think especially what you've done for women. Saudi Arabia is committed to empowering its youth, empowering women. عم بيكون في اصلاحات عم بيكون في النساء عم تروح تحضر مباراه عم بيروحوا يحضروا حفلات موسيقيه كل هالخطوات ما لها اي مستخيه ما لها اي فعاليه حقيقه يعني The rights of women in Saudi Arabia have been a subject of debate for many years. The government has said it supports the empowerment of women and young people. And there have been reforms, including lifting the ban on women driving in June 2018. They can also now attend sporting and musical events. But at the same time, the arrest and detention of women speaking out against the government seems to have continued. And this potentially undermines the kingdom's public desire to improve the status of women. In this program, an Al Jazeera Arabic team examines claims that over a dozen Saudi women activists are awaiting trial, that several are in detention, and that many have fled the country because of harassment over their political views. What is now happening is a woman has the choice to breathe, a woman has a choice to dream, and she can action. A woman today can't say, I couldn't find a car, I couldn't find a driver, because now you can. I'm seeing what's happening. It's like a revolution in a very positive way, and I want to just uh, thank you. السلطة تخفي انخراطها المباشر في عمليات التعذيب ضد هؤلاء المعتقلات. How would you describe how things are changing for, for women? Um, it's amazing. It's totally different because a couple of years ago we couldn't walk like this. It's different. It's really different. So where between these two poles does the truth lie? Al Jazeera examines the state of women's activism in Saudi Arabia, hearing from female detainees, international human rights organizations, and seeking responses from those at the center of decision-making within Saudi Arabia. This is a story that begins with a series of arrests, all of Saudi women. Starting in September 2017, when an academic, Rukhaya al muharib was arrested after talking about corruption in one of her lectures. Then, in January 2018, a student and women's rights campaigner, Noha al-Balawi, was arrested after criticizing the thaw in relations between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Then in May 2018, there was a wave of arrests, including 12 prominent women's rights campaigners. The eldest was 70-year-old Dr. Aisha Almana, a veteran campaigner for the right to drive. Others included Hassa al-Sheikh, and Madiha al ajrush who opposed the country's conservative guardianship system. Others included Lujain al-Hadlul, Iman al-Nafjan, Aziza al-Yusuf, and Wala al-Shubar, all campaigners against the guardianship system. Their arrests were widely reported in Saudi Arabia, where local media described the women as traitors and agents of embassies. أتحدث إليكم كناشطة حقوقية قال لها زوجها وليد في اليوم الأول لا أدري متى يعتقلونني وكم هي مدة الاعتقال لكننا معا سنكمل مشوارنا الحقوقي 
قمت معه برفع دعوة قانونية للمطالبة بحق المرأة في الانتخابات وأخرى بالمطالبة بحق المرأة في قيادة السيارة ساعدنا الكثير من النساء المعنفات Samira Badawi is standing up against two of the most significant challenges facing women in Saudi Arabia. Samar has translated her personal efforts into broader campaigns, encouraging more women to speak out for their rights. You are making a difference, and we thank you for that. Samar Badawi is standing up against واقوى مدافعات عن حقوق الانسان في السعوديه وعم بيدفعوا اليوم عم بيدفعوا ثمن النشاط تبعونه يلي عم بيقوموا فيه يلي بنعرفوا انه بعد لليوم ما في ما بلشت المحاكمه تبعيتهم وبعد ما في اتهام توجهت ضدهم بعدهم محتجزين بشكل تعسفي uh, the, the an example of many, many other similar cases uh, in Saudi Arabia where persons are detained without any lawful basis uh, and for a prolonged period of, of, of time very often uh, and subjected to very harsh uh, inhumane conditions. ونحن نطرق هذه الأبواب وننتظر من يعطينا حقوق سمر بدوي اعتقلت ليلا حاملة طفلة طفلتها بين يديها جود عمرها أربع سنوات فقط مسلطة عليها الأبواء الساطعة وأيضا موجهة عليها وعلى ابنتها الصغيرة الأسلحة فقيدت سمر بدوي إلى سجن ذهبان وبقيت هناك وتعرضت هي ولجين هذلول وعزيزة اليوسف وشدن العنزي وإيمان النجفان إلى تعذيب جسدي وحشي وتعذيب نفسي وحشي يفوق أي من التصورات لا أدري وش العصر الذهبي اللي نتكلم عنه أنا بالعكس أعتقد العصر الذهبي كان في السبعينات والثمانينات أفضل بكثير من الآن Under the guardianship system as it's enforced in Saudi Arabia women cannot leave prison uh, without their male guardian's permission even if their sentence is expired and these are many cases that of course we've documented uh, validating this uh, in addition, women who've gone to shelters, uh, government-run shelters, can't often leave the shelters unless their guardian, who's oftentimes their abuser, uh, agrees that they should be able to leave. When we spoke to Mohammed bin Salman, he made it very clear that the royal court was ahead of the popular curve and that actually many women didn't want to go out to work, that this is in some way a kind of foreign demand. I think it's unfair of him to say that um, about women if he just checks the long waiting list of women waiting for a job in the education sector, he would be amazed by the big number. Also, the jobs are limited compared to the number of graduates. I don't think they're working um, hard enough, in my opinion. وقيدت إلى السجون ليلا وسلطت عليها الأبواء ووجهت عليها الأسلحة. Whatever Mohammed bin Salman may have said to Bloomberg, um, uh, people have seen the indictment and the charge sheet against the women. And the only charges against them relate to their talking to foreign media uh, and foreign organizations like Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International. Uh, there is no evidence, no allegation of evidence, that they talk to any uh, foreign intelligence. Um, and it would just be ludicrous, because even if they did talk to foreign intelligence, what they talked about is public knowledge, and that is the conditions of women in Saudi Arabia. الاعتقالات كانت دائما تحدث لكن الجديد الان انه اعتقل حقوقيات وناشطات لم يكن بالضروره ناشطات سياسيات في البدايه لجين الهذلول لم تكن ناشطه سياسيه بقدر ما كانت ناشطه من اجل اكتساب حق قياده المراه للسياره فهذه الاعتقالات قد تكون سيست المعتقلات وايضا سيست الشعب عندما كانت مقابلة محمد بن سلمان ولي العهد السعودي مع صحيفة بلومبرغ 
فوجهوا له سؤالا مبني على الاحصاءات التي اصدرناها وقلنا ان حمله اعتقالات واسعه قامت بها السلطات السعوديه طالت قرابه 150 شخص وكنا نقول 150 كعدد تقديري نحن لا نملك ارقام حقيقيه فاجاب محمد بن بن سلمان على السؤال لصحيفه بلومبرغ فقال لا ليس العدد 150 بل العدد 1500 عشرة ناشطة مثلنا أمام القضاة في المحكمة النيابة إن الموقوفين أقروا بالتواصل والتعاون مع أفراد ومنظمات معادين للنيابة العامة السعودية أن جميع الموقوفين على ذمة هذه القضية يتمتعون بكافة حقوقهم التي كفلها لهم النظام المحاكمة يلي اليوم عم بتم والجلسة يلي صارت كان ممنوع من الدخول لأي دبلوماسيين والصحفيين المعلومات اللي عم نجرب نتلقاها واكيد نوثقها ونحقق عنها هي معلومات محدوده بس تعطينا فكره يا ما نبزي عن الوضع الاجمالي. The trial of the 11 women began in a Riyadh criminal court in March 2019. Initially, no charges seemed to have been brought against the women. But one London-based human rights organization said that the eventual charges related to the promotion of women's rights as well as sharing information with journalists and international human rights agencies. Following an international outcry, however, some of the women were granted temporary release, but others still remained in custody. But with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, all their trials have been postponed indefinitely. The Al Jazeera Arabic team looked for accurate, first-hand information about the prison conditions of the women activists. Their search took them thousands of kilometers away to South Africa, where they tracked down Yumna Desai, a former female detainee in Saudi Arabia. Crucially, she'd been held in Dahban prison alongside the high-profile women activists. Uh, my dad wanted me to become a teacher. He told me to go over for a year and try it out and see if I liked it, then I could continue with it. So I went to Saudi Arabia for a year. Basically that morning before I could go to work, I got a call saying that I should come to the admin building uh, in the University of Hain. Supervisor was there. She told me that I had a problem with my passport and I'll need to go with somebody to the passport office. The moment I left the university premises, I saw the secret services about six cars parked uh, in a line, and they were all fully armed soldiers as well as policemen. They took me to my apartment and they then raided my apartment. And from there we left and I was taken to the security headquarters in Hyde. About 9.30, the supervisor came to me. He came with his own phone and he said to me, I'm doing you a favor and I'm going to allow you to phone your parents. Please don't tell your parents where you are. Just tell them that you're OK. And at that stage, my dad told me that it's not only you. Uh, your three siblings have been arrested as well. That same night, around uh, 11 o'clock, I was flown to Chidda. That's the prison, the Haban, and that was my first night in prison. الناشطات والنساء كلهن تم اعتقالهن في سجون سياسية عدد منهن في سجن الدمام في المنطقة الشرقية وأخريات في الحاير في الرياض السياسي وأخريات في ذهبان السياسي في جدة وأكثر التعذيب الذي حصل أو الانتهاكات التي حصلت كان غالبا في ذهبان في جدة Details of Dahban prison can be pieced together from sources in the public domain and the testimony of former detainees. It's around 20 kilometers from Jeddah on the west coast of Saudi Arabia. It's a maximum security facility completed in 2015 with space for 7,200 prisoners. According to the Saudi media, Dahban is the most advanced prison facility in the country. Former prisoners have criticized it heavily but the authorities claim it offers top-class facilities, including gyms and swimming pools. 
This is a sketch of President Dahban that I drew in Jeddah. It's just a sketch of the female section only. This entire section here is the group cells. We call it the group wing, as I've written here, group wing. It's for those who come out of solitary confinement, they are then transferred to the group wing. On this side here are the cells for solitary confinement. The wing here in the middle is the new wing that has been opened. It's called the activity wing. It's uh, basically little rooms where girls can do activities. This is basically the old investigation room. When we came out for investigation, we will be taken out from our cell and then taken to the investigation room. Later it changed and they opened a separate wing for investigation, as you can see here. The investigation room was very close to the group cells and we'd hear many things. So I think for that reason, they moved the investigation rooms very far, so we basically can't hear see anything on that side now. In the British capital, London, a male Saudi dissident has a family connection with Dahban prison. His elderly mother and two of her other sons have been held there for over two years with no scheduled release date. نشاط السياسي والحقوقي بدا عندما تعرفت على منتدى الاصلاح كنت وقتها مبتعث هنا في في بريطانيا لدراسه الهندسه كان عمري 25 سنه لانه المعارضه من الداخل امر مستحيل وانه ان وعي الشعب من منطقه نكون فيها امنين كنت على على اتصال مع الوالده تقريبا اسبوعيا فاتصلت على الوالد واخبرته ماذا ماذا جرى للوالد لا لا ترد على اتصالاتي فاخبرني انه حتى ولا يعلم اين اين هي فقمت بالتحري عن طريق بعض اصدقائنا في وزاره الداخليه فاخبرون انه الوالده تم اعتقالها بالفعل وانه ايضا شقيقه عادل تم اعتقاله ولكن الوالد او ابوك لم لم يستطيع اخبارك لانه تم تهديده انه اي خبر يصل لعبد الله سوف نحكم على على ام عبد الله بالموت اعتقلت والدتي تقريبا يوم مساء الاثنين في في 26 مارس 2018 طبعا طريقه اعتقالها كانت اشبه بال بشغل المافيا لانه عند وقت اعتقالها كانت هي واخوي عادل في السياره فتم مداهمه السياره وكانوا كلهم جميعهم بلباس مدني في نفس الوقت اللي داهموهم وهم في السياره في جده تم اعتقال اخي الثاني في في مدينه الدمام وجده والدمام تقريبا بينها 1200 كيلو اللي يعرفون السعوديه بعد الاعتقال الذي قامت به السلطات السعوديه للسيده عائده الغامدي واثنين من ابنائها حاولنا التواصل مع السلطات السعوديه لمعرفه الاسباب وطريقه الاعتقال وكيفيه الاعتقال وما الى هنالك. قالت السلطات السعوديه ان السيده عائده الغامدي معتقله وتحاكم ويحقق معها وفق الماده الثانيه لنظام جرائم الارهاب. الماده الثانيه هي ذات ليست ذات معنى. وليست مادة قانونية يمكن ضبطها قانونية. لا يوجد أي تهمة موجهة للوالد حتى الآن. كل التهمة فقط إنه وكلام القاضي تحديدا لها بعد جلستين من من المحاكمة أنت لا يوجد عليك أي تهمة فقط نحن ننتظر أوامر من مقام السامي حتى يتم الإفراج عنكم. Three weeks after I was arrested, the investigator came in the room. With a picture of myself holding the, my dad's weapon, and he said to me that you have uh, photos on your phone of women that oppose the government. That I can't comment on something that I haven't seen. So he took out the photo from his folder and he showed it to me, and I asked him, "Do you know who is this?" So he said, "No." I said, "This is me." The crime in South Africa is very high, so most homes possess at least one or two guns. And everybody is trained on how to use the gun so that in case anything happens, they can defend themselves. Saudi Arabia uses a communication law to bring charges of cybercrime against so-called dissidents, as well as foreign nationals like Yumna Desai. Well, the law is too vague. It's not clear and certain, and it can therefore be manipulated and used by prosecutors and judges to justify any action to, 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 to get a, a conviction and sentence uh, in the end. Uh, of course, every country does need to have 
proper cyber laws, uh, but you can't have them used in this way where, where they are so general uh, and where without any evidence. You are not allowed international calls if you're a foreigner. So I was obviously not able to call my parents for those entire three years that I sat there. Uh, after a few months, my sister uh, came to Saudi Arabia. She came because we didn't have visits, we didn't have a phone call. And then we ended up phoning her and then she would put the two phones together and that's how I spoke to my family. And after six months, uh, my family came and they tried for a visit. They were obviously denied a visit uh, the first time they asked for. They asked quite a few times. Eventually, my mom went to human rights in Jeddah and she asked them to help her. And they came with my mom to the prison. Whenever we go to prison, the difficulties that you experience, it's not like other prisons. It's a, mass, a maximum security prison. It's run by military. It's not a civilian prison, so it becomes very, very difficult. For example, the particular room that you do your visits, that room is like a prison cell. It has a steel door here, right? The military guards who are there, they will open that door for you and they're on a cell phone or they're on the walkie-talkie. They get instructions and they open. Then the prisoners come in from one entrance. They are anchored. Blindfolded. After about seven or eight months, we were told that uh, we are innocent and all four of us will be released. Uh, a few weeks after that, the investigator came back to me and he said to me that unfortunately you won't be released, you will have to face the court. When the three were released, it was like, put it to you this way, uh, it's a body without an arm. We were missing a limb. We were extremely overjoyed and happy. But you can imagine a body without a limb is incomplete. So we were never really satisfied. We were never content. That worry and that concern was always as a family. When will we not be released? Will they keep her for a longer period? Because for three years we struggled only to find out, just tell us what a wrong did you not do? What crime did she commit? Then at least we are satisfied. But unfortunately, the three years went without a single answer. Three dozen countries, including all 28 EU members, issued Saudi Arabia with its first rebuke at a UN rights forum on Thursday. We are particularly concerned about the use of the counter-terrorism law and other national security provisions against individuals peacefully exercising their rights and freedoms. That rebuke of Saudi Arabia by the United Nations Human Rights Commission in March 2019 was in direct response to the detention a year earlier of women's rights campaigners in the kingdom. It came after a group of British MPs and international lawyers had made a formal request to the Saudi authorities to allow them to access the country and speak to the detainees. But they never received a response. The cases had attracted international political and media attention, and while three of the women were temporarily released, at least seven remained in prison. Human rights organizations, uh, European governments, Western governments uh, have protested. Uh, uh, many, many countries, not just Western governments, have signed letters and, and issued resolutions calling for their release. Um, so why Lujain uh, remains detained, why Samar Badawi remains detained, uh, while others were released on bail, uh, is really a question that should be addressed to the Saudi government. Many of the girls that come in the prison have absolutely nothing against the royal family. They love the state. But because of the conditions they are kept in, because of the way they are treated, they, by the time they leave the prison, they obviously hate the state, they hate the government. And uh, while Saudi Arabia uh, claims to be fighting terrorism, by the way they are going about in doing this, they are themselves breeding hatred amongst their people.
What we do know for a fact is that the Saudi government is spending millions and millions of dollars to try to address uh, the damage to its reputation that its behavior has caused, uh, including, of course, the detention of these women's rights activists. And of course, it's uh, really disappointing uh, that rather than spending all of this money on propaganda and public relations to try to restore the damage that its actions are causing to its reputation, why it doesn't just release uh, these women activists, uh, as well as other political activists that it's detaining in the country. The Al Jazeera Arabic team examined the case of Aisha Al Marzouk a Saudi woman who'd obtained asylum in Sweden in March 2017. Aisha claims that she was tricked into returning to Saudi Arabia after receiving assurances, she said, from the Saudi ambassador to Sweden. The last anyone heard from Aisha al Marzouk was this tweet from Riyadh Airport. Hello, I'm Aisha al Marzouk who returned to Saudi Arabia after assurances from senior staff that it was safe for me. Now the police at King Khalid Airport have arrested me. I want to warn all women and girls, do not return. The situation is the same, she tweeted. The kingdom's ambassador in Sweden guaranteed my safety, wrote Aisha from her cell at the airport, before being taken away. Al Jazeera wrote to the Saudi ambassador to Sweden, Abdulaziz Al Zaid, to ask him if this account by Aisha Al Marzouk was accurate in his view. Had he guaranteed Aisha's safety if she were to return to Saudi Arabia? No reply was received. Hessa Al Mahdi is another Saudi human rights activist also living in Sweden. She keeps a low profile and initially declined to be interviewed or meet the Al Jazeera team. But eventually, in May 2019, she agreed to tell her story, filming the interview at a location away from her home. Facebook. <laughs> تم تجريم يعني الجمعيات اللي جربوا حاولوا يخلقوها يأسسوها كله تم التعامل معهم من قبل السلطات بشكل تعسفي وقمعي بدأت السلطة يعني تراقب المنزل أصبحت مراقبة من جميع الجهات حتى الهاتف لا أستطيع أن أثق به أو أتواصل براحتي لأنه مخترع يرون ما أكتب مع من أتحدث بدأت تصل لي التهديدات عن طريق الهاتف استمرت التهديدات واستمرت في نشاطي لم أتوقف إلى أن وصل لي آخر اتصال وقيل لي هذا آخر تهديد لك فبعدها عرفت أنني لن أستطيع البقاء والصمت ولن أستطيع الاستمرار والسجن The Saudi government has a well-known campaign underway of trying to bring Saudi dissidents, critical Saudi voices who are outside the country, back to the country. Uh, and we know that uh, the Saudi government uh, has, through intermediaries like Mr. al Kahtani, uh, attempted to reach out to many other uh, dissidents uh, outside the country. Uh, trying to persuade them to come back. In some cases, as you mentioned, by signing some kind of apology or confession, uh, but in other cases, just saying, it's fine, just come back. Uh, I don't think you will see too many Saudis taking up uh, that offer, uh, given, of course, uh, the experience that we're seeing in the country right now. Al Jazeera contacted the Saudi government through its Ministry of Media. It asked if the former court advisor Saud bin Abdullah al Kathani was involved in efforts, including threats, to persuade Saudi women's rights activists outside Saudi Arabia 
to return to the kingdom. No reply was received. كنت أفكر أين أذهب وكيف أخرج؟ نعم أنا عندي جواز وعندي تصريح من الوالد لكن بأي صفة أخرج؟ يعني لا أستطيع أن أحجز وأخرج لوحدي لا يجب أن يكون هناك أمر مبرر أمام السلطة وأمام العائلة حتى أنني خرجت بملابسي فقط لم أحضر شهاداتي ولم أحضر أي أوراق غير الجواز والهوية وصلنا السويد ثاني يوم توجهت إلى الهجرة وقلت لهم أريد اللجوء وأريد فتح حساب وأخبرتهم أنا لا أحتاج منكم إلا الحماية أستطيع أن أصرف على نفسي وهو أعمل وأنا لست بحاجتكم الحمد لله طبعا بالسعودية كان الإنسان يمارس النشاط البسيط وهو خايف لكن لما وصلت السويد فتحت حساب بتويتر باسمي الصريح وكتبت قصتي وملاحقتي وما حصل لي وبدأت عن انتهاكات الحاصلة في السعودية بدأت في التعاون مع المنظمات المختلفة العالمية منذ أن بدأت أعلنت النشاط وبدأت بدأت معي هذه التهديدات طبعا يهددون بأسماء مستعارة لا يهددون بأسماء صريحة إما بالقتل أو بالإعادة الجبرية إلى السعودية أو بما مختلف التهديدات طبعا كلنا نعلم أن من يدير هذه نسميهم الذباب الإلكتروني من يديرهم هو سعود القحطاني كانت السلطات السعودية في فترة الإخفاء القسري للسيدات يأتي بعض الأشخاص الذين كانوا يقولون للنساء أن هؤلاء من الأمن السيبراني ويبدو أن لهم علاقة بسعود القحطاني بشكل مباشر فلم يكونوا من رجال من الدولة ولا من رجال مباحث ويأخذون النساء إلى أماكن مخصصة خارج السجن يسمى أحيانا القصر وأحيانا يسمونها الفندق وأسماء أخرى According to the information we received held in an informal facility um, that was uh, referenced and called the hotel, although we don't know uh, specifically where that is, uh, what our initial investigations received is that that's where the interrogations took place and that's where the initial torture and abuse of the women detainees taken place. Little is known about the facility they call the hotel. In fact, there's no independently verifiable evidence of its existence. The claim of torture at this location, said to be close to Dabhan prison, comes from a group called al Kist, meaning justice. Based in the UK, it's an organization that documents alleged human rights violations in Saudi Arabia. The information that we have is not clear in a clear way. أن هذا الموقع هو يبعد قرابة عشرة دقائق بالسيارة من من سجن ذهبان. كنا الضحايا عندما يخرجنا من السجن في السيارة استغرقنا قرابة العشر دقائق حتى يصلنا إلى ذلك المكان. The Al Jazeera Arabic team tried to find out more about the so-called torture hotel. One source. A family member of a detainee who asked to remain anonymous did shed some light on it. The source claimed that the villa is in a densely populated area and that detainees are transferred there from their place of detention by private jets. Yumna Desai, the South African teacher who was held in Dabhan prison, had testimony about the so-called hotel. One of the detainees that told me about the place knew the place before she went to the uh, before she was taken there. So she said to me, the public sees the hotel and they think it's where princes stay, but they don't actually know what happens in. This place, I felt that it was 
مكان مهجور سابقا كان ممكن يكون قصر سابق ممكن يكون فندق سابق تعرضت للتعذيب هنا تعرضت للتعذيب وهي ما فقط تعذيب للحصول على اعترافات لا تعذيب من اجل التعذيب كانه في نوع من الانبساط بالتعذيب مثل, مثل الاحتفال كانها حفله تعذيب السلطات السعودية عمدت إلى استخدام أماكن أخرى لممارسة هذه الانتها... لهذه الانتهاكات أن السبب في ذلك عدم وجود ثقة بين أنظمة السلطة In terms of the investigations that we've been conducting in Saudi Arabia for the past several decades I would say that the torture allegations that we've documented over the past year uh, are certainly unprecedented I know that in uh, 15 years at Human Rights Watch, uh, it's very, very rare, if ever, that we document a torture of anyone, male or female. We don't know, of course, if that's necessarily uh, means that people weren't tortured before, but certainly in terms of what we've been able to document, um, this is a, a significant escalation. تلقينا معلومات انه تم باول ثلاث اشهر فتره احتجاز مجموعه الناشطين تم تعذيبهم وممارسات اخرى لاساءه المعامله، حسب هالمعلومات بجلسه الاستجواب كان عم بيصير في ضرب صعق بال بال بالحبلات الكهرباء. Forceful hugging, threats of rape. Uh, one of the women was having difficulty walking after the torture she endured. Another of the women tried to kill herself because of the torture she endured. Uh, and of course, uh, prolonged solitary confinement uh, has been another means of torture that the government has been using. I myself have seen quite a few girls that tried to commit suicide. There was an 18-year-old Saudi girl that I myself had to go and help her. She basically tied uh, her scarf around her neck and a put a packet over her head and tied a scarf around her head. And I had to go myself and take, pull her out of the bathroom and take out the packet and untie the scarf. واحدة على الأقل منهم عريت وصورت عارية ووضعت صورتها على طاولة التحقيق لإجبارها على الإجابة أو حتى توقع تأهد بعدم العودة ليس هذا فقط بل أيضا أقل على الأقل واحدة منهم لمست في أماكن حساسة وتعرضت إلى تحرش جنسي وهن مكبلات بالأصفاد فلك أن تتخيل أنه لا يمكن حتى أن يدافعنا عن أنفسهن لا يمكن أن يحركنا أيديهن One of the girls that I spoke to said that while she was being interrogated, they would line up prisoners on the chair and they would like beat the prisoners uh, in order to force her to speak. And the prisoners would like scream out to her and say to her, please answer for our sake so that they wouldn't torture us. One of the kids that were born there, uh, she spent uh, the time that I spent, she was born in prison and for one and a half years I sat with her. It was like the most a touching thing ever. Watching her learning, her only world was those four walls. Watching her learn to crawl, uh, learn to speak, learn to walk, starting to eat, doing things in, within those four walls. And until today, she's still there. The uh, uh, government, uh, Saudi Human Rights Ministry, uh, had, did indeed uh, carry out an investigation and a report where it claims to have uh, seen the women, and uh, as well as the Saudi prosecutor uh, said that it did its own investigation of the prison conditions as well. Um, to no surprise, um, they concluded that there was no evidence of torture. However, there was another torture, that, there was another report, a Saudi government report that was leaked uh, that did corroborate injuries uh, to the women. تقييم إيجابي خرج به وفد حقوق الإنسان الدولي من زيارة سجون المباحث العامة المعنية بموقف الإرهاب في السعودية. فهذه الزيارات غير مستقلة على الإطلاق، منسقة مسبقاً، معدة مسبقاً، كل من وقعوا فيها 
وكل من زاروا السجون السعوديه وكل من شاركوا في حمله التلميع حتى وان قالوا زرنا اماكن معده مسبقا ورايناها جميله ولم نزر غيرها فهم شاركوا في حملة الدعاية والإعلام يجب أن يعتذروا للضحايا للمجتمع السعودي للإنسانية ككل Al Jazeera wrote to the chairman of the Saudi Human Rights Commission asking for a copy of their December 2018 inspection report of Dahban prison No reply has been received I have an incident uh, during my time in Dahban that I learned that one of our cellmates passed away. The night that she passed away, we heard screams, uh, unusual activity. We really didn't have any idea what exactly was happening, but we did know that something was happening in the wing. We later learned that uh, one of the girls passed away that night. Uh, there was reports that she, was, she didn't have a natural death. She was actually tortured and she eventually passed away. Another Saudi activist, Manal al-Sharif, previously campaigned for the right to drive. Now living in exile in Australia, she actively supports the detained women activists. The law did not include the woman, and the law did not use the law to give the law to 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 the law. Manal al-Sharif has also campaigned in the United States in support of the detained women. There, she received a surprise invitation to meet the new Saudi ambassador to the U.S. Princess Rima bint Bandar bin Sultan bin Abdulaziz al Saud is the first woman to be appointed to this key diplomatic position. But Manal al-Sharif viewed the invitation with caution. The NDC just tweeted they're ready to uh, arrange for a meeting between me and Princess Rima bint Bender, the new ambassador in DC. I'm happy to meet her and this is really a good sign. Uh, my demands are simple. The immediate unconditional release of the women's rights activists in jail, all the prisoners of conscience, the lifting the ban on the family members, the travel ban on family members. And my last demand is I'll meet you outside. A member of the Al Jazeera Arabic team visited the Saudi embassy in Washington to request an interview with the ambassador. But he was refused entry. Hi, how are you, man? I'm George, a special investigative journalist. I was just wondering if I could speak to uh, nah. Ambassador Rima. As Ambassador Princess Rima has previously spoken in support of female empowerment in Saudi Arabia, Al Jazeera wrote to her, asking for her view of the detention of women activists, but she did not reply. The Al Jazeera Arabic team also wrote to the Saudi Public Prosecutor, the General Directorate of Prisons, and the State Security Agency about torture against women detainees, but did not receive any replies. Lately, I've also learned that many of the prisoners sit for years without trial in the Haban because they had signs of torture on their body. The investigator will wait until those signs of torture disappear from their body before they're taken to court because they don't want the prisoner to go to court and then complain to the judge. The trials in Saudi Arabia is closed door trials, so nobody's allowed in. I had no lawyer. It was clear from the beginning that the judge's intention wasn't to help me as a detainee. He was just there to do his job of sentencing people. He said that uh, I've been sentenced to three years and two months based on the picture, which falls under cyber crimes in Saudi Arabia. Political detainees are not criminals. A different opinion or outlook on life should be embraced as a positive thing. Work with them to make your country better. Don't detain them. All I ask for is change and accountability. Thank you. Uh, you, you know, I'm just uh, wanting to update you on where things are with the case at the UN. So they've accepted that, that now uh, and um, wanting your consent to be able to, to send it from here to 
the authorities in Saudi Arabia because they then receive it uh, and once it's received they have to reply uh, to it okay. to, to the allegations that are made okay okay I see um, well on our side we've got absolutely no problem with that so yes you've got our full consent to proceed with the case طبيعة الإنسان أنه يحن للوطن الذي نشأ عليه يحن لعائلته لكن لا أتمنى الرجوع في هذا الوقت في ظل هذه السلطة يستحي العودة أنا خرجت لهدف أتحمل صعوباتها فمهما بدأ الحنين مهما أخذ الحنين يزداد أحاول أن أتناسى لأن الجميع قطعوا علاقتهم فيني الكل خائف أنا أعذر الجميع لأن الكل خائف أنا أصبحت التواصل معي شبهة وجريمة يعاقب عليها من هو في السعودية فأعذرهم جميعا As we've already said, Saudi Arabia has introduced social reforms including lifting the ban on women driving and the government has talked publicly about quote, empowering its youth empowering women but at the current time at least seven, possibly more, women activists arrested in 2018 remain in detention. The exact number is unclear. In any case, court proceedings in Saudi Arabia are normally closed to international journalists and outside observers. It is known that a small number of the activists were granted temporary release, but their cases remain active and no date has yet been set for them to be concluded. Nor does the end of the detention of women's rights activists in Saudi Arabia appear to be anywhere in sight.